Hi everyone, my name is Leili Seyfi. I'm Associate Professor at University of Birjan. I'm here with Nogozi Osochoko, a member of planning team of ESC 2023. Hi Nogozi, welcome. Thank you very much, Leili. Thank you for having me in your special episodes. My pleasure, glad to have you here. I have a few questions for you today. So okay. uh, first, uh, please introduce yourself and tell us how did you get involved with uh, entrepreneurship? All right. Um, I am Ngozi Pepeshwa Usushuku. I have a PhD in Library and Information Science. I am a lecturer in the Department of Library and Information Science, Namdea Zikiwe University, Oka, Nigeria. Um, actually, I got involved with ELC last year in 2022. I can't exactly remember how I joined, but um, maybe someone posted, sent a mail to me. I saw the call for committee and all that. I read it and I loved what I read. So I joined and it's been a very beautiful, you know, it's been a very beautiful development since then because I've come to meet smart minds, you know, beautiful minds that have ideas. I'm enjoying it. Thank you. Oh, that's great. Interesting. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, yes. And my next question is that in your idea, uh, how libraries can position uh, themselves in entrepreneurship ecosystems? Sorry, can you say that again? Uh, in your idea, how libraries can position themselves in entrepreneurship ecosystems? Okay, yeah. Um, librarians um, have a lot to do when it comes to entrepreneurship. One, as a lecturer, entrepreneurship is one of the courses we taught in the classroom. It's part of the curriculum because today's librarianship is not all about books and reading. There are other things librarians and even libraries do by the side. For instance, if you go to most libraries, apart from reading, they are facilitating um, other, you know, other skills, other skill acquisitions, even, even within the literacy circle, like graphics, you know, photo shoot, um, digital skills, and so many things. So librarians can reposition themselves. Let me use the word reposition themselves because I know they've been positioning themselves all along. So it's time to reposition themselves when it comes to entrepreneurship because we have to keep, you know, we have to keep being relevant. We have to keep changing with the tide, changing with the time, so that it may not become rustic in our profession. So it's good that we go into full swing into entrepreneurship so that people can still see us as relevant as we organize these trainings in the libraries. You can even do that outside the libraries as community engagement and all that. So it's a good thing that we go into it fully. Yeah, thank you. Oh, thank you. Very important points. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Nogozi, tell us that how your university libraries support entrepreneurship. Yes, in my university library, there are so many programs going on. Just like I said, uh, there are usually a um, series of digital training. There are other things apart from digital training. We have uh, other skill acquisitions where people actually learn skills you know, life skills, apart from, you know, something that is quite different from literacy and all that. I was there once and um, people were being taught on how to do um, even publishing, book publishing, um, things like beads, you know, even confectionaries. There are lots and lots of things the libraries do these days. Then in the public library, let me deviate a little. In the public library, because I volunteer my services there, I was there part of the entrepreneurship program. We are school children, I mean, primary school children, children under 12. We are being taught on how to, you know, do so many skills with their hands. There were some, we are painting, you know, artwork, uh, designing, beads, and so many things. In fact, I was really, really impressed with the librarian there. Yeah. Great, great. 
Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Yeah, our next question is that, uh, like, uh, could you share uh, with us information needs and practices of entrepreneurs? Yes. You know, first of all, before you begin any entrepreneurship in the library, there is need for needs assessment because you have to give what the people want, not what you want, because what you want may be different from what they want. So from needs assessment, you now organize training. Actually, the librarians may not be the, they may not be the ones doing the facilitation, but because of their training, because of their collaborative activities, their partnership and all that, they can get these people that can facilitate these skills. So number one is to do this assessment from the users. When you find out the kinds of skills they would like to acquire, we now go out and source for the people that will facilitate those skills. So when they come, because in our library, uh, in our library, there are spaces, you know, uh, maker spaces and all that. We are all levels of entrepreneurship can take place. So we group them into these uh, spaces. We are learning can take place because it's all about open knowledge. Thank you. I don't know if I answer your question. That's great. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, 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 sure. Uh, that that was really important, especially like as assessment of information needs. You know that assessment is very important for like uh, the community. Uh, and my last question is that: What do you hope the ESC conference in November will accomplish? Yes, in fact, I'm actually looking forward to that. The ELC in November, I'm sure it's going to accomplish. Um, let me use the word testimony, because last year we talked about entrepreneurship generally. So this one, yeah. we are now talking about, you know, kind of reports, you know, kind of testimony, kind of result of what actually libraries or librarians have been doing uh, with entrepreneurship. And during the last meeting, someone mentioned that if someone could come out to say that he or she gained this knowledge from the library or gained this skill, that's beautiful. So I believe that this year's ELC will enable participants and whoever comes across to learn or read, you know, to re-establish themselves in going into entrepreneurship, you know, in re strategizing in innovating other ways because I'm sure people will come out this time to talk about their strategies to come out the practices you know all the things they do so it's going to be an eye opener it's going to be an insight it's going to be a testimony lessons learned on various entrepreneurship people are going into so people will learn a lot and you know translate those learning in their libraries Exactly, exactly. And uh, we are all hoping that, you know, we will uh, experience this year very different, you know, uh, from the last year. And e each and every year we are really learning we, we yeah. as a planning team. Yeah. Thank you for sharing yeah. your uh, thoughts and idea. Any other okay. thoughts and experiences you would like to share with us, please? Uh... Well, the experience or the thoughts I will rather want to share is I really hope that you all will come out in mass this time and circulate the information so that people, we have more people, more, you know, more um, storytelling, more information, more sharing on entrepreneurship and we all go back and, you know, start practicing them because it's all about moving up, updating, upgrading, you know. Yeah, building on what we know. Thank you so much. Thanks Thank a lot you. for being with us today. Thanks. Thank a you, lot. Lely. Thank you. I will not stop recording. Thank All right. You.